Great. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, here we are, January 1st, back in the uh, bunker, if you will, or back in the trenches, recording yeah. another episode. We promised you great things in 2024, and we're going to begin 24 with a wonderful, wonderful um, discussion. Or mm -hmm. maybe we should. So the uh, last season ended with uh, me being tied to the railroad tracks and uh, Jared uh, being sent off to the gulag. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, we've survived this predicament. So we're back here at the uh, at our at our desks recording uh, another episode of Kvetching with Adam and Jared. It was a tough December for Zionists. Rumor has it that uh, you know the one Zionist put an uh, one anti-Zionist put a Zionist in the hospital at the Great Association for Jewish Studies conference. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard all sorts of other stories about people uh, harassing um, various other. People who are Zionists. And yeah. then the AJS sent out some kind of general statement on civility. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the Zionists are uncivil. We have already determined that. Anyways, um, that is a topic in and of itself, um, which we could broach at one point. After all, the left has renounced civility. They've made it abundantly clear that civility is for the privileged, and therefore they don't have to be civil. It's a tool of fascism and whatnot. But that's not our topic for today. Today, we've got a very, very exciting topic. It's always in the news this year, so I'm kind of reluctant to call it exciting, but we are going to present it in an exciting manner. And that is Yoshke, Jesus. Who was this Jesus? Who did you think Jesus was, Adam? Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus, right? Jesus, yeah. Jesus. Um, Aside from Larry David's gardener, but you know, that's another story in and of itself. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've seen the Jesus Christ Superstar movie. Mm -hmm. And you've yeah. seen the life of Brian, presumably, also. I've seen that too. Yeah. yeah. And I've, I've also seen Ben Hur, and he's made various Ben Hur. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Great movie. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, for long, there was, you know, a lot of Christians were under the impression that Jesus was a Christian, and there were some Christians who still don't know that. Who still think that and of mm -hmm. course jesus was not a christian because jesus was a jewish person he wasn't he like martin luther he wasn't out to found a new religion he was out to form to reform what he saw as a very corrupt religion so you know the, the consensus at least i thought it was a few years ago especially once you know most of christianity recognizes was that jesus was a jewish person um, mm -hmm. Yet, I guess about a decade ago, it seems to have started up that people have been claiming something else. And that is that Jesus was a Palestinian. Jesus was a Palestinian, a nation that didn't come into being until the 1920s. It's a remarkable achievement if they could pull that off. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there an article in the New York Times of all things that was making the case that Jesus was a Palestinian? Was that this year? I didn't see no, that. Just a few years ago. Uh, it's possible, uh, you know, yeah. it was it was absurd and it was silly. And um, here's to you, New York Times readers and Palestinian uh, team Palestine. We're going to show you today why Jesus was not a Palestinian, why it was mathematically impossible for him to be a Palestinian and why having this same damn conversation every year is absurd. So hopefully this podcast will put an end to it once and for all. Play this for all your woke friends just to show them how stupid they are sound. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn on screen share now because I have a wonderful, wonderful PowerPoint presentation that I just threw together. And uh, not to take all the credit, you know, away from, you know, Adam or anything. He did, he did preview the, uh, the PowerPoint. And I looked sure, at it. I looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> he did look at it. And I'm sure he will have stuff to say. So mm -hmm. here it is. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't Oh, there you are. Okay. I didn't see you for a second. All right, made in Palestine. It's amazing what turns up if you Google Jesus was Palestinian and go to images. You find some really remarkable things, and this is one of them that popped up. Um, I, of course, added the, the not uh, part myself. Uh, at least they're portraying him as brown, which is something, because you know for a long time, Jesus, as we know, was portrayed as an Aryan. And the Time Magazine did a feature, what was it, 10, 15 years ago? Maybe longer at this point, probably 20 years. Uh, this is what Jesus would have looked like. And he looked like someone from the Middle East, which, of course, he was. Yeah, some he Jews... Didn't, he did not look like that guy from Jesus Christ Superstar? Is that what you're saying? It's been a very long time since I've seen Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh. And to be honest, I will admit, I'm not even sure I've seen it or the whole thing. Oh. 
So uh, I, I know the soundtrack fairly well, but uh, I don't know if I've actually ever watched it. He yeah. doesn't look like Brian, though, in The Life of Brian, which is unfortunate. No. Mm -hmm. that, that I can attest to. But some genius had the idea of adding a kafia, uh to him and other, you know, Palestinian. That is a kafia, right? Or it's uh, supposed to be? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, which is utterly um, absurd. So what about, have you seen The History of the World Part 2 with Mel Brooks? No, I heard it wasn't good. I watched one episode and it sucked. No, it's hilarious. Really? My student yeah. told me to watch it, but I... I this, this, this scene from uh, the, the, the Last Supper and uh, there's a guy that's uh, cursing Jesus Christ at the table and Jesus is sitting there and he says, what? I saw that. That I did see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So well, we didn't, you're saying Jesus did not actually look like that guy. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, uh, yeah. I, am I saying that? Yeah, you're saying that. I, he might have looked like that. I mean, that's what an ancient Jew might have looked like. Um, but he certainly wasn't wearing that headscarf. Uh, uh -huh. And yeah, he was not made in Palestine. Because guess what? Palestine did not exist. And now we great scholars are going to show you why Palestine didn't exist. So let's have a brief history lesson here. Okay. Uh, of course, this brief history lesson will be smeared as Zionist Hasbara. For those of you who don't know the word Hasbara, how would you define the word Hasbara, Adam? Well, isn't that like diplomacy or something like that? Or well, no, how it's used. It, I don't know what the, the the root of the word actually is offhand, but it, it's propaganda. It's used as propaganda. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea is, I, I think the root has something to do with like bringing people in um, to 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 anything. Um, that's what I think, but I have to look that up to be sure. But if someone accuses you of Hasbara, they're accusing you of uh, Zionist propaganda. Um, so we're going to be accused of that inevitably. Um, so I might as well just you know put it on the screen for now. Now, for those of you who are a little bit unfamiliar um, with the history, we're not going to you know, go back all the way to the beginning when God said, let there be light. Um, or in the Palestinian Bible, it's let there be Palestine um, in the opening sentence. And it was evening and it was morning, uh, day one. Um, but that's not what it says in, in the Bible that the Jews and the Christians use. So ancient Israel, you know, there existed in multiple formations uh, going back to approximately um, 1000 BCE. But the remnant of it was known as Judea, right? It was an independent kingdom for a while called Judea. Uh, then they were in exile in Babylon, and they came back, and then they were a province uh, in various empires. And then briefly independent under the Maccabees, you know, the, ha the Hebrew hammers, if you will, who liberated Judea and gave us that wonderful uh, holiday of Hanukkah, which goes on for a little bit too long. So ancient Judea, right? It was a province in multiple empires, the Persian, the Greeks, and then finally, the Romans. It was the province's official name. Sometimes it was Judah, sometimes it was uh, Judea, Yehud, depending on which language we're talking about, depending on which regime we are talking about. So everyone please note the dates. Roman Judea was 63 BCE to 135 CE, okay? Mm -hmm. Temple was destroyed during that time period in 70 CE. Why 63 BC? E? Well, because two geniuses who were vying for power uh, in the independent kingdom of Judea, uh, descendants of the Maccabees, I believe, um, couldn't decide who was entitled uh, to have power. And they were both highly corrupt. So they said, hey, let's invite the Romans in to settle this dispute. You know, then they'll put the right person on the throne. Um, never invite the Romans in to settle a dispute. That's like inviting Stalin in to you know, draw the border between Poland and Ukraine. He's not going to leave after said border is drawn. So we have Roman Judea existing all the way up until 135 CE. And it's at that point when Rome renamed the province Palestine after the failure of the Bar Kokhba revolt. The last time there was an armed Jewish insurrection to reestablish a Jewish state until Zionism came onto the scene. And they renamed it Judea. Okay, so where does Jesus fit into all this, right? Mm -hmm. Adam, what's peculiar about this? I, I, I gave you a whole bunch of dates here. Right. What jumps out as you as being problematic here when they say, hey, Jesus was a Palestinian? Which means uh, Well, you know, it does not work chronologically. Yeah. Because uh, Jesus uh, was born um, prior to, the, uh, to all this happening. He was born back in, uh, he, he, G, Jesus was born uh, back in ancient Judea, 
The dates are right there. Yeah. Four, the approximately are, four yeah. BCE. Unfortunately, they couldn't get the calendar lined up to have him born in the year one, which is a bit of a mystery to me. But uh, yeah, so he was born in a province called Judea, and he was crucified in approximately 32 CE. Uh, the dates vary from 32 to 36. And again, I don't know why they can't be exact with that. That's recorded history at that point. And um, so 32 CE is when he died. When did Palestine come into existence? Uh, well, in the fifth century. No, 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 I'm not, no, the province of Palestine. Oh, the province of Palestine uh, in um, from uh, 135 uh, CE. Yeah. Now, I'm no mathematician, of course, or as my friend likes to say, Mr. Trigg. I'm no Mr. Trigg, but that is 100 years later. So there was no such thing as an entity called Palestine, or at the very least, the Roman province of Judea was called Judea officially by the Roman Empire and by the Jews living there, as they had called it for 700, 800 years. Um, not only was it not Palestine, it's mathematically impossible for him to be Palestinian because there was no territory called Palestine, and it is documented that Jesus was born a Jew and died a Jew, as we have already stated. His name was Joshua ben Joseph, uh, Joshua son of Joseph, or Yoshua. in Arab... Sorry? Yoshua. It's Yoshua ben Yosef. Yeah, or Aramaic, which was uh, Jesus's first language. Uh, just as an aside here, the Judeans were speaking Aramaic as their first language at this point. Hebrew had already been the, become the language of prayer um, at this point. They picked it up when they were in exile in Babylon. So yeah, so Joshua ben Joseph or Yehoshua in Hebrew or Yeshu in Aramaic. Um, so it'd be Yeshu bar Yosef, though I can't vouch that Joseph is Yosef in Aramaic. I don't speak Aramaic. Um, and, of course, he's known to history as Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Christ, of course, meaning Messiah. Okay. We see here that it is mathematically impossible for Jesus to have lived and died in Palestine, and therefore he could have not been part of any people called the Palestinians because he was Jewish, unless the Palestinians are trying to claim that the Jews living in ancient Judea were Palestinians. Now, technically speaking, after 135 CE, if you were a Jew living in Palestine, you were a Palestinian Jew at that point, right? Because you were living in the province of Palestine. And in 1920, if you were a Jew living in Mandate Palestine, you would have called yourself a Palestinian Jew. Because the way the term is going to be used from 135 CE into the 1920s is a political term. It has no relationship, in fact, to the people known as the Palestinian nation today. Now, do you remember why Rome renamed the, Pal uh, the province Palestine? Well, they wanted to uh, de-Judaize the area, right? Yeah. So of all the names they could pick, why did they call it that? Well, because it's the, the it refers to the Philistines, who had absolutely nothing to do with that area in the first place. They absolutely. were like a seafaring people that happened to reside around the Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah, they were a, a seafaring people known as the Palestine, known as the Philistines, and you can right. be sure that if they were in fact the ancestors of the Palestinians, which they're not, then uh, the evil Zionists of antiquity would have blockaded um, their seafaring adventures, and those wouldn't have happened. Yeah, and this is documented. How Philistines were the evil ones in the Bible. I've got a couple of quotes here. They were uh, the Jews' most intractable enemies in the Bible, with the possible exception of the Amalekites. Uh, they come up uh, more frequently. You know, they said Haman was an Amalekite. My teachers told me Hitler was descended from the Amalekites. But the Philistines are pretty damn close to that. Now, so that's that's documented. 135 CE, BC, uh, CE the province is renamed. Now, here is the problem um, that scholars have not been able to fully work out. Um, it seems that in some Greek texts, going back to the 5th century, and it's in Herodotus, uh, one of the first great historians, probably the first or the second, um, he does refer to some of the territory between what we call the river and the sea um, as, uh, as Palestine. He does use that term to refer to it in Greek texts. That said, we don't know what he's referring to exactly. Is he referring to a chunk of the territory? Is he referring to all the territory? Why is he using that word? 
Is he using it because of the Philistines, since the word is closely related? And moreover, I will underscore that it's only in the Greek language that it is used, right? There is zero evidence that Romans using Latin or that Jews uh, speaking Aramaic would have used the word Palestine. They were speaking Aramaic, and it's documented that Jesus spoke Aramaic. He didn't speak a word of Greek. So there is no way that the word Palestine ever came out of Jesus' mouth. So there's a, it's a bit of a conundrum about what Herodotus was referring to. Um, I have a couple of maps here. Everybody likes maps, right? Do you like maps, Adam? I like maps. Okay, well, let, let's, let's pull up a map here. Before you pull up the map, though, I want to ask you, uh, why are you relying so much on chronology? Like what? I don't understand. What, what, what is this obsession, this fetish you have with chronology? Because I am a historian. But a professional historian. chronology is only one of many valid ways of understanding history. That is at least what the woke postmodernists uh, tell us. I know, I know. You know, they say mathematics is a tool of, of white supremacy. I'm pretty exactly. sure. Someone right. would say, yeah. you're right, I'm unmasked, I'm a fraud, my, my PhD. But I got a PhD from a woke institution in history, right? Berkeley is as wokeity woke as you get, and they gave me a PhD. They told me I'm a historian. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so I have to say that I think that your, um, your methodology is uh, very Eurocentric. Yeah, it's Eurocentric, it's ahistorical. It's ahistorical, uh, exactly. White supremacist. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like the 1619 project. Uh, it's like what the 1619 project seeks to combat by using categories of race uh, in times and places as the engine of change and whatnot, when they simply have no applicability whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You're right. Um, okay, my whole degree is a fraud, uh, which is why I'm now a podcaster. This is a lot more fun. As long as you uh, face the music, yeah. as long as you, you own up to the fact that... Uh, you're very biased in the way that you understand historical uh, information, that you think that history is somehow linear, that you had a past and you have a present and then there's a future. Like that, that you know, that things could be looked at in circular ways and all different kinds of ways, that it's not just, you know, A leads to B, which leads to C. It's funny, Adam, because I've accused the entire discipline of, of political science of being ahistorical from time to time. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. So, are are you suggesting that your discipline is historically grounded, or are you of the the woke uh, interpretation of the past? Well, we, you know, our discipline is about uh, understanding human behavior, which is timeless and does not necessarily require the under, understanding hum, human behavior through the lens of context. Hmm. Right. Okay. All right. So Adam, Adam eschews context, um, like the woke, but for different reasons. He's not doing so for the uh, express purpose of... Uh, of it depends upon who you terms. ask in, in social science. Mm -hmm. It depends who you ask in social science. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm trusting that you're someone who will take history into account. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to some maps here. Yeah. All Everybody right. loves maps. Uh, the first map is a province of Roman Judea. Okay, And this is documented. It's, it, this is the New Testament uh, depiction of the area. See, it's Judea. It has borders, right? Borders which, you know, are not exactly that of contemporary Israel, but um, do bear a strong uh, resemblance to it. We have the province of Edumea uh, in the south. Interesting aside here, the Edumeans were the one group in history, or at least known to history, that the Jewish state or the ancient Judean state forcibly converted to Judaism, right? That has, does not happen um, in, among the Jews. We are a non-proselytizing people, but this did happen under the Maccabees. They converted them to Judaism. So that's just an interesting aside there. I don't know, maybe there were Palestinians that we converted to Judaism. That's a narrative they're probably going to take out of this video. So yeah, here we have the province, but I don't see anything relating to Palestine in this map, do you? No. Nothing whatsoever? No. no. Absolutely not. Does uh, Caesarea have anything to do with Caesar salad? Um, no, you're getting mixed up with Orange Julius having to do with Julius Caesar. Ah, uh, right, right. Yeah, you're getting your you're getting your Wayne and Schuster. That's a Canadian comedy act mixed up with uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, but uh, maybe it does. I don't know. 
So here's a map of ancient Judea broadly defined, right? Going all the way back perhaps to 700 when there was an independent state called Judea before it was uh, destroyed by the Babylonians only to be rebuilt. And look, we do have a territory called Philistia here, mm -hmm. right? Now, again, I'm not sure what language this is that it's being used, but presumably this is the area where the Philistines um, were supposed to have lived. Archaeology is obviously, you know, our, our main source, archaeology and the Bible are, are our main sources from this period. But the Philistines were certainly a people there, and as you suggested, a seafaring people. Um, they were, I don't, I don't think they were Semitic. I believe that they were, they were actually descended from, a, or their language was closely related to Greek, um, I believe, but don't quote me on that. Um, so here they were, right? Okay, so they exist, the Philistines. And it's quite possible that when Herodotus used the word, um, he was referring to them. We don't know for certain. But again, this is not Palestine. And if there is a root relationship between the two words, given the Romans renaming the province, it still has nothing to do with the Palestinian nation because they're not referring to Arabs. These people were not Arabs. Right, they were a, a tribe in the region that were not even Semitic. Um, so what's going on here? Um, just to give you a little, another little uh, theological lesson here with the Philistines, I've decided to pull some quotes from the Bible. Everyone loves the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, not everyone, but most people. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, just to show you um, how much uh, the Judeans and the Philistines hated each other, uh, they were the arch enemy of the Jews. This is a quote from Samuel, and there's a lot of depictions of uh, incidents between them, David and Goliath. Goliath was supposedly a Philistine, so there's a lot going on here, lots of war, but this is one of my favorite ones, and it has to do with uh, David wanting to marry Saul, King Saul's daughter, the first king of uh, ancient Israel, and uh, Saul uh, not wanting to, and so he figured, hey, let's send David out to the Philistines single-handedly and have them kill a hundred of them and uh, do some other bad things. And uh, this way, David will never come back and he can't have my daughter's hand in marriage. Saul replied, say to David, the king wants no other price for the bride than a hundred Philistine foreskins to take revenge on his enemies. Ouch. Saul's plan was to have David fall by the hands of the Philistines. How do you remove a hundred uh, foreskins, Adam? You have to have a hundred moils. <laughs> but David's all by himself. Well, he'll have to hire some mercenary moils. You don't believe in volume business? Uh, you know, in my Seinfeld book, the Seinfeld Talmud, uh, this is actually uh, Zutra the Moil's favorite passage in the Bible. And he actually started a business uh, called uh, Volume Business for Heathens, where he, you know, he goes and mass circumcises people. Um, he was almost thrown out of the academy for that one, I think. Well, you have your answer right there then. Okay. Well, so there might be some rabid moil that could pull this off. But what happens? David doesn't die. And we know he goes on to be the great David, king of Israel, um, who had his problems, of course. David took his men with him and went out and killed 200 Philistines and brought back their foreskins. How did he pull that off? Maybe they had roommates, right? Maybe it was two Philistines per household back then. I mean, that's the only logical thing I could think of. But that's a remarkable achievement. Yeah. So um, this is a visual depiction if anyone needs uh, more evidence. And uh, I am told that this is an authentic reproduction from uh, the reign of uh, King David. Um, it was the artist was uh, unknown to us, but you know, this is solid history. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't look like 200 Philistine uh, uh, foreskins, does it? Uh, well, but you know, he, he, he's got them all in the bag. That's right. true. You, yeah, I guess you could fit 200 together. Yeah. Did you hear about what King David did with the 200 uh, the foreskins? No. He decided to sew them all together um, so he could have um, a wallet. Um, uh. And do you, do you know what happened when he rubbed his wallet? It turned into a suitcase. <laughs> you haven't heard that one? No, no. Uh, no. Well, that's one of my favorites. Okay. So why is this lie invented? and that Jesus was a Palestinian. And I'll add that it's even been said these days that Palestine, that the Christmas in and of itself was a Palestinian invention. Now, I just want to point out one thing here, and I'll say it again. Jesus was not a Christian. Christianity was invented, premised on Jesus, decades after Jesus died. And it was Saul who became Paul, was the big inventor of Christianity. He's the one who made it into a new religion. And that was around 65, B, uh, 65 AD, which is still 75 years 
before the region was known as Palestine. So there's another uh, sham that they brought into it. But still, why invent this lie? Um, and here we get into the subject of nationalism, right? We really see what nationalism is all about. One, to prove the antiquity of Palestine and the Palestinian nation, right? After all, if these people running around were Palestinians, then the land belongs to them, right? Nationalism, indigeneity, is all about we were here first, right? So they can claim the territory. Hmm? Nothing. My dog was barking. Go oh, does, he, does he have something to say? No. Okay. So, so, so they're claiming their antiquity of, na of a nation. That's how all nations um, claim their antiquity. We were here first. You know, we Serbians were here before the Croatians. We uh, Ukrainians were here before the Russians because the ancient state of Kievan Rus was actually a Ukrainian state, not a Russian state. Yada, yada, yada. There's nothing particularly original um, about it. But still, there are Jews in the Bible. We know that there was an independent state called Judea. How did they get around this? How, they, how can they get around this? Well, they say that's the lie, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's one way. Uh, and, you know, the law is partly premised on the idea that, well, Herodotus called it, uh, you know, Palestine. So clearly there's a more accurate source from 500 BC. But there's more to it than that. And that has everything to do with European Zionism, right? And we were having this conversation earlier today. What does this mean? Branding the Zionists as European. How does that intertwine with this? Um, well, because they're trying to say that uh, that the that the that the Jews that the, the 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 Zionists that are claiming to be Jews today are not really the same Jews who were there then, who yeah. were really Palestinians. Yeah, they do this. They do this in a variety of ways, right? And yeah. Okay, we all know DNA studies were bullshit. So, it, I mean, DNA study shows that the Jews and the Palestinians are in fact closely related. But uh, yeah, European Zionists—they're white colonialists who come in. Are they descended from ancient Judeans? Some people will say perhaps, but they've been away for so long. You know, they, they mix with the other peoples. That, you know, they can't claim you know the antiquity or direct descent. Uh, the more rabid people come up with the Khazar theory that the Jews are actually European Jews are descended from Khazaria or the Khazars, a Turkic people who, for God knows what reason, converted to Judaism uh, in Central Asia around uh, the year 900 or so. Um, and there's another interesting way that they do it. And the sad thing is there are some Jews during the Enlightenment and even American Jews who would actually agree with this, that Judaism is not a nationality or an ethnicity. It is just a religion. You know, we are Americans of the Jew Jewish faith. We're um, trying to say that the nationality is Palestinian. Some Palestinians are religiously Jewish. Yes. That's, I guess that's what they're trying to say. Yeah. I guess that's what they would say if they were pushed to it when discussing it. But, but Zionists, right, they, they, is a, they don't acknowledge Zionism as a political movement. They, they seem to think that Zionism is some kind of national identity. Zionists. Right. Yeah, of course. That's what they see of Zionists. Which yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, our Jews and nation, and we've talked about this so many times, our Jews and nation, a race, an ethnic group, or a religion. Well, they're all of those things, and they're none of those things. You know, we don't fit neatly into any one of those. But, but we do know what they're not. They're not a political movement. Zionism is a political movement that's adopted by a lot of Jews, and even non-Jews who embrace it. Right? Yeah, who, and who believe that there is something called the Jewish ethno nation, rooted in kinship and common descent, tracing back to antiquity, that should have their own states, uh, state in their ancestral homeland. Yeah, so it is a political idea, but it's premised on the Jews being an ethnic group. And you read the Bible, okay? It is all about genealogy and descent. You know, this is the land of your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not the land of people who happen to practice the same religion as you do. So yes, it's a religion, Judaism, but it's, a, a, it's an ethnic group that defines itself through a theology, okay? So that's, that's the best way I could possibly put it. So European Zionists, well, they're just these religious Jews who decided they were nationalists and they want to come in and colonize Palestine. And that's the end of it. And yeah, hey, and they'll even say, gotcha. They'll say, hey, look, you know, Ben Gurion and company in the 1920s called themselves Palestinian Jews. Even they admitted that they were Palestinian. 
And yeah, but it's only because they were living in, Pal in, in British Mandate Palestine. Yeah. And to be clear here, again, the word Palestine, when the Romans renamed it Palestine, had nothing to do with the people today we call the Palestinians. It had nothing to do with it in the Middle Ages, and it had nothing to do with it in the 1920s. It's only beginning in the 1920s where Palestinians start to think of themselves as a distinct nation, something that the rest of the world did not agree with, and I'm including their Arab neighbors here. And even the UN, you read UN documents, there's nothing mentioning Palestinians as a nation in there uh, until you get to the 70s. Uh, even in uh, Resolution 242, uh, it, it does not mention the Palestinians as a distinct nation. It's only in the 1960s that the international community starts to recognize the Palestinians as a distinct nation. So, I mean, there's but just... But I mean, that was common to refer... In those days, before you had decolonialization, it was common to refer to anyone from a particular colony by the name of that colony. Absolutely. Right. So of that's course. why Jews were called Palestinian at that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was the internationally accepted name of the state of the region for for yeah. 1800 years. Oh. Now, I imagine when the Romans renamed it Palestine in 135, there was a negative connotation for the Jews who were living there and they were livid about it. But as time went on, you know, they just figured, OK, this is the name of the region. We won't have a Jewish state till the Messiah comes whatever, it becomes a politically neutral name. Even the uh, Yerushalmi Talmud, the Jerusalem Talmud, um, is often referred to by Jews as the Palestinian Talmud. And that's like 425 uh, B, um, AD. So uh, clearly the Jews did not have a problem with that term because it was a neutral term. Were there Arabs by then? Obviously there were Arabs. There were Arabs also uh, at the time of Jesus. They didn't necessarily define themselves as Arab, but they were just tribes speaking Arabic. And we have something that resembles, if you want to call it, an Arabic nation or empire of sorts when the Muslims come in um, and take over the region in the 600s. And that's the first time you can talk about Arab Muslim rule um, in the region. But even then, the Arabs living there, did they might have called themselves Palestinian Arabs since they were Palestinians in the territory of Palestine um, being ruled in an Arab empire. It's hard to say with the documentation we have. Now, there's also a bit of anti-Semitism going on here. I mean, the whole thing is driven by anti-Semitism, right? To deal First with all, I, want to, I want to thank you for spelling anti-Semitism correctly. You know, I almost spelt it without the hyphen, but I figured, you know, I, which is what I normally do um, for my, you know, course material and whatnot. But I figured, you know what? I wanted to spite the anti-Zionists as much as possible. I like the word Semite. Um, my one issue is there is no such thing as Semitism because Semitism is replete with anti-Semitic stereotypes. Um, but, you know, in terms of there being a race called the Semites, they are a race as much as uh, East Asians are a race or South Asians are a race. They're culturally constructed categories, right? So it, it's, 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 it's a stupid debate, which I don't usually get into. But, you know, if I want to spike the you answer, happen to know that I prefer this spelling. You do. I did it all for you, Adam. Okay, does that make you happy? It's my, it's my New Year's gift to you. I'm still waiting for your own. I appreciate that. Now, how is this anti-Semitic, aside from the, you know, delegitimizing and erasing uh, Jewish history in its entirety? Um, and hi as we already said, history, or Adam said, history doesn't have any legitimacy. It's a, it's a tool of white supremacy. Um, well, it fits into a, the blood libel, right? That, that uh, the Jews killed, not only are they killing Palestinians today, they've been killing Palestinians throughout history. And uh, in particular, Jesus. Well, they've been killing Christians throughout history, right? I mean, the, the Palestinian thing's a, a recent innovation. So, and no, no, no. they're trying to they're trying to uh, get away from that idea that Jews were are, were killing Christians. Oh, absolutely no, but uh, I mean, before the rise of Palestinian nationalism, right? I mean, throughout history, Jews killed Jesus. Blood libel was the kidnapping of Christian boys to reenact the crucifixion. Uh, we loved it so much, we want to do it again, again, and again. Or as Lenny Bruce said, uh, not only did we kill him, but when he comes back, we're going to kill him again. And um, the uh, Nazis took it to the extreme. Susanna Heschel wrote a really important book on this topic called The Aryan Jesus, where the Aryanization of Jesus, you know, reached its completion, which was something in the Middle Ages. You know, you look at pictures. Of he, yeah, he's depicted as a white guy in the Middle Ages. But here is a poster from Nazi Germany. They fight and the Jews grin. Germany as Christ. And this is from Der Sturmer, uh, published by Julius Streicher, who was executed at Nuremberg. 
Um, and here it's abundantly clear. Here's Mr. Jew, and um, here is uh, Jesus, who looks uh, disturbingly like Superman um, mm -hmm. in this image. So, yeah. Now, what of the Palestinians? This is a 2,000-year-old stereotype, right? Or at least 16, 1,700 years. Well, the Palestinians have repurposed it for themselves, right? I found this um, on the internet. I'm not sure who Arnoud van Dorn is, but I'd like to thank the historian Magda Tedder for uh, displaying these images side by side. She had a great thread on Twitter, uh, Twitter today. And uh, here we have Jesus on the cross. And it says, they killed him again. Merry Christmas, Gaza. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, so this is absurd. The Jew remains guilty and Jesus somehow becomes a Palestinian. And all this makes no sense if they've already written the Jews out of history from the region. Right? It's a bit of a contradiction because, you know, since we know the Jews killed Jesus and Jesus was a Jew, if you're going to make the Palestinians um, into, uh, you make Jesus a Palestinian, then you've also made the rest of the Jews into Palestinians, which means the Palestinians killed Jesus. You're thinking mathematically again. I don't oh, know. What sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Sorry for bringing logic into this. Yeah. So um, just in conclusion, um, I think we have a, a few words here before we shut off the PowerPoint. Palestine begins in 135 CE. Well I, well, I think there's one other reason that uh, is lurking uh, behind why they're doing this. Uh, I would add a fourth reason. I, I think they're also trying to get uh, Christians to support the Palestinian cause. Mm. Right? I think that's a big part of this, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine there are leftist uh, Christian churches that do you know, support this idea. A lot of a lot of the Presbyterians I'm and other sure groups. That there's a fair number of mainline Christian denominations that are uh, supportive, or at least uh, may may be supportive of this idea. It's and there's, a, that's the audience. I you know it's something I want to look into because I'm very curious about it. Um, but it's true, it is the audience, right? Or they're, they're targeting they're targeting white Americans with this, right? Mm -hmm. This is a message for the woke. Uh, I find it hard to believe that any educated idiot who lives in that region would actually believe this, assuming they're not in a heavily, you know, propagandized, you know, state. Um, but the message is uh, for the woke um, because it fits so well into their narrative. I think they want this to catch on with mainline Christians and have this part of their Sunday sermons, you know, to, to rally uh, uh, Hasbara for their for their side. Well, it's not going to work with the evangelicals, and I don't think it's going to work with the Catholics either. It definitely will not work with the evangelicals, and it won't won't work with Catholics. Okay, so that leaves just a bunch of liberal uh, Protestant churches. I wonder what Martin Luther would say. I think he'd have, an, uh, you know, since he hated the Jews so much, he might have had an opinion. Uh, but I think his first response would be, what the hell is a Palestinian? Because the Palestinians did not exist when Martin, Martin Luther lived. So just to conclude... Point one, Palestine, quote, begins in 135 CE, notwithstanding Herodotus. Mm -hmm. Jesus died 100 years earlier. And again, I will, you know, advocate for mathematics and history here. Because 135 CE minus 32 CE comes to 103. Jesus died 103 years before Palestine existed. Jesus was born a Jew, and he died a Jew in Judea. It leaves open the question of what he will come back as, however. Yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, he, is he going to come back as a Jew or as a Christian? I'm sure the Palestinians will say he's going to come back as a Palestinian. But let's not try and predict the future. So the end of the story here is the modern Palestinian nation, which is an ethno-national community, which does exist, right, um, came into being when they decided that they actually had an identity and the people came to believe they had this identity, which even Rashid Halidi, a Palestinian nationalist and at times a decent historian. Even he says the 1920s is when a Palestinian national identity started to come into being crystallized. crystallized. He had some intellectuals in the 1890s, but beyond that, you know, it's like Dante in the Middle Ages talked about an Italian identity, but nobody else living in Italy, you know, thought in those terms. So Palestinian, modern Palestinian nation, whatever, even if you want to throw math out the window and say that it's irrelevant, these 103 years in between, still has nothing to do with ancient Palestine. The two are completely unrelated.
And here I have a quote from Jesus uh, himself, um, just to, to demonstrate that this guy wasn't talking as a Palestinian talks. He wasn't even talking as how a Christian talks. Oi, what a forcocked way to start the week. Yeah. Who says that besides a Jew? Yeah. He was yeah. But you know what? He actually ended up having a good week since he rose from the dead on the, on the third day. So again, he's Jewish here. He's a pessimist. Actually, I guess this is sort of a... Whether that's an optimistic or a pessimistic statement is something that's open to debate. All right, now that we've offended a couple of audiences. Well, that's good. But I just want to make one last point here, um, and this should hopefully appease some Christians. Um, there is a far greater chance that Jesus was the Messiah than he was Palestinian. I am not in a position to prove that Jesus is not the Messiah. What I personally believe is immaterial here. I can't prove that he's not the Messiah. But I can certainly prove and we just have, that he is not a Palestinian. All right. Well, we can falsify one, but not the other. Yeah. I, uh, Jesus is the future. Now, again, you know, if you want to get all postmodern and social justice on me, I guess the future doesn't matter if the past doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they might be certain that Jesus might be coming back as a Palestinian, and they will tell us that our facts are just tools of Jewish supremacy. It's entirely possible. I'm going to turn off screen share, unless you have some final thoughts on the math. Mm -mm. No. Math? Now, I, I'm sorry, I, know I did most of the talking here, but, uh, but I am the historian and the, the discipline that I'm, I'm not convinced you believe in. Um, so what are, what are your lingering questions here? My lingering questions? Yeah, yeah. You 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 uh, you, you, you uh, voiced some skepticism uh, about that final line um, before we started recording. There was a greater chance that Jesus was the Messiah than he was Palestinian. Well, I mean, I don't believe that that Jesus was the Messiah, but um, like you say, right? We know for sure that Jesus is not was not Palestinian. Mm -hmm. So yeah, one yeah. is one is a matter of faith, and the other is a matter of of uh, historical evidence. But you accused me of not even believing that the Messiah exists. Well, you don't. Yeah, I guess that's true. You know, you've, the... you've you've said many times on this podcast, not this episode, but in previous episodes, that you're an atheist. That's right. Um, now, right. if I'm going to, if you're going to accuse me of uh, you know, believing that the Messiah, maybe I believe Jerry Garcia is the Messiah. I'm a big deadhead, you know. Maybe I believe he's going to come back. But I guess I would not make me an atheist. So if you're if you're accusing me of, of not believing of believing that the Messiah doesn't exist, I'm I'm going to throw this back at you and I'm going to ask you. You might not want to answer the question. Do you believe the Palestinians exist? Um, yeah, there's a people in the world that uh, identify as Palestinian. Yes. Okay, that's fair enough. And there are people in the world, I will add, that identify as Jesus. Um, I went to Berkeley. I met at least five of them walking around People's Park. And uh, and Sproul Hall in the big plaza. I've known several people named Jesus, and I've known several Palestinians. As have I, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know if I've ever known any Palestinians though named Jesus. I don't. I've never met a Palestinian who claims to be Jesus. Never. No. Yeah. Well, there's always hope for the future. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this was a very enlightening episode. It's our history lesson. Um, so we are staking our claim as Jews, and at least me as a historian who believes in fact, causality, and temporality um, for the beginning of this new year. But not all historians believe that. That's true. Uh, there are some very misguided historians. And you know, when I when I went to Berkeley, um, postmodernism was all the rage. This is before social justice and postmodernism, you know, merged with each other. So yeah, no, that they didn't. Um, but the farthest they really went was Foucault, um, you know, who argued against uh, history, and he argued for what he called archaeology, right? Uh, which means that you're not explaining uh, historic history linear in terms of how point A leads to point B leads to point C, um, because he said that's unprovable, and that's what history is. Whereas archaeology, you imagine an archaeologist, you know, digging up the ground, he comes into different layers of the past, right? So the, the archaeologist will know that what will happen, what happened around the time of Jesus. The archaeologist will know what will happen in 400 BC. The archaeologist will know what happened in 700 BC. But he won't be able to show how 700 BC leads to 400 BC. 
which leads to the time of Jesus, right? They throw causality out the window, right? Mm -hmm. No causality. That's as far as it went, at least in, in, the, uh, in the classes I took. I did take one methodology course, so we're week after week. We read one person after another, up to and including Judith Butler, who argued that history can't be written. And you know what? By the end of the semester, they convinced me, and I ended up leaving graduate school for three years because of that. And then I chose to come back. Even if you throw causality out the window as, as your basis of methodology, you still know that there's a chronology to history, right? That one thing happened before another thing. So therefore, the thing that happened after the first thing cannot have possibly been the cause of the first thing. Right. That is correct. But, you know, you're, you're a Trekkie and you like the science fiction stuff. I'm sure you could you could find an episode of either Star Trek or the Twilight Zone that would negate what you just said. How so? I don't know. I mean, did you see the uh, Twilight Zone episode Judgment Night? He kept reliving the Nazi on the U, but he kept reliving the same thing over and over again. He was actually the cause of his own death. Uh -huh. All right. Well, if we're in another dimension, I suppose that's possible. Well, I'm going Maybe to... these people are living in another dimension. That was going to be my next uh, oh. statement. Yes, I believe uh, the, 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 the Woke Hamas Alliance are living in another dimension. It's like the outer limits, right? Uh, do not attempt to adjust your television. We are controlling transmission. Um, I just want to add, for the record here, although I'm a huge Twilight Zone fan, I don't go in for Star Trek and, and the other oh. stuff that he watches there. Yeah. But I do know every Twilight Zone episode off by heart. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I mean by outer limits, right? Yeah, it's a TV show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, but I am a big I'm a Twilight Zone fan, and I don't recall Jesus or the Palestinians being in any episode. Do you? Of the Twilight Zone? Yeah. No, I don't. But there were Jews in some episodes. There were a couple of episodes about Nazis. Yeah, but there's the episode where the Nazi returns to the concentration camp. Mm -hmm. Right, and he's haunted by the ghost of a of an yeah. inmate yeah. who yeah. obviously is Jewish. Right, um, but they don't mention once in the entire episode that he's Jewish because you couldn't talk about Jews on TV um, in the early 1960s. Um, I show that episode in my Holocaust memory class just to show the limits um, of being Jewish. You know, for all I know, there's someone teaching a Palestinian history class and using that very episode to show the Nazi being haunted by the ghost of a Palestinian Holocaust survivor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you can. It's multi-purpose. Yeah, I, I'm afraid that we're giving people ideas here, and we don't want to do that. Yeah, don't. No. Yeah, there'll be there'll be a Palestinian, uh, a woke Palestinian Twilight Zone reboot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which would give us great material for our podcast. So I'm all for it if uh, Hollywood wants to wants to do it. Um, I'm not going to fund you. They pay us. Hmm? Provided they pay us for our, our ideas. Oh, absolutely. And we'll be able to slip in little hints of Jewishness, some, you know, wink, wink, a la Groucho Marx or uh, any of the other uh, celebrities, Jewish celebrities from that time period. Well, I think this was terrific. And I think at the very least, Mel Brooks, he didn't die Mel Brooks, right? He's still alive? He's still around. Okay. Norman Nor Nor Lear died. I think, I think Mel Brooks should take this episode and make it into a feature length movie. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You History call. of the World Part 3. History of the World Part Three, Adam and Jared's narrative, undoing Palestine, unmaking Palestine. I don't know. We'll we'll think of a title. Palestine. There is a fifth dimension called. <laughs> How does the theme song go? Or the or the, the intro? Uh, there is a fifth dimension beyond sight and sound of mind. Uh, I don't remember offhand. I do. This, know. Is, this is what we call. The Twilight uh, Palestine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. On that note, we are going to sign off. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy and New I Year. Hope you enjoyed this le lesson, this lecture. Um, as you can see, that uh, I am very pro professorial when I get into my history mode. Um, and um, this will be up hopefully on January 1st. I'm going to encode it and post it tonight or tomorrow morning. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.